Hey everybody, welcome to our channel Living in Richmond, Virginia, where we show you exactly what it's like to live, work, eat, and play right here in RVA. This is our first video in our luxury neighborhood series, and today we're focusing on the Glen Allen area. Glen Allen is a wonderful suburb just a little north of Short Pump, and it's definitely a great place to live. In this video, we're going to show you six different luxury neighborhoods, and be sure to stay to the end to see why we wouldn't live in the most expensive one, and it has nothing to do with the price. If this is your first time to our channel, welcome. I'm Taylor Jefferson, and my wife Sarah and I own and operate Jefferson Grove Real Estate. We've helped tons of families relocate to Richmond, and if you're thinking about doing the same, be sure to download our free Richmond Relocation Guide. It's full of useful information all about Richmond and the surrounding areas. The link is in the comments below and on our banner image. If you haven't done so already, you have to subscribe to our channel, because every week we'll be posting new videos all about living in Richmond, including more neighborhood tours, fun things to do in RVA, and lots more coming up. Now, with all that being said, let's dive into today's video all about luxury neighborhoods in Glen Allen. This isn't our first video about the Glen Allen area, so if you're unfamiliar with this location, then be sure to watch our previous videos on it. Glen Allen has lots of really nice neighborhoods within the area, and fortunately, not all of them cost a ton of money. But today, we are focused on those that do cost quite a bit. For the purposes of this video, we define luxury as large and expensive, so the neighborhoods we're about to showcase all cost $700,000 or more. There is one luxury neighborhood that we aren't discussing today, and that's Gray Oaks. Gray Oaks is nothing short of amazing, and it's one of our favorites, which is why we featured it in our Best Neighborhoods of Glen Allen video. So again, be sure to check out that video if you haven't already. So the first neighborhood we're going to bring up is Wyndham, which was also in the Best Neighborhoods of Glen Allen video that we made. The reason we're going to cover it again is that Wyndham was one of Richmond's first planned urban developments, and it has many different sections within it, practically like miniature neighborhoods within a neighborhood. So we're going to do a deep dive into two of the luxury home sections of Wyndham, starting with Cherry Hill. Cherry Hill is located in the eastern section of Wyndham off of Dominion Club Drive along Cherry Hill Drive and Leebrook. Cherry Hill only has 54 homes within it, and they're all built between 1992 and 1999. So these are some of the oldest homes discussed in this video today. Now, you might see it as a pro or a con, but this section has part of the golf course go right through it. Maybe you think that it adds the beauty and curb appeal, or, if you're like me, then all you think about is having golf balls dent your car. Like I said, it's up to you whether you view that as a pro or a con. Despite them being older, the homes here are all beautiful both inside and out, and they feel very classic. Sizes range from 3,100 square feet up to 7,500 square feet, with 4 to 7 bedrooms and 3.5 to 5.5 bathrooms. Prices range from the low 700s to over a million dollars. The area is beautiful with mature trees and pretty landscaping, and you get really nice Wyndham amenities, including a neighborhood pool, walking trails, sidewalks, tennis courts, and more. Now, the Ellington Woods section of Wyndham feels very, very different than Cherry Hill. Ellington Woods is located to the northwest of Wyndham, just above the Bradford Landing section, and not too far from Pouncey Track Road. Immediately, you notice that you're not in the older sections of Wyndham anymore, and you do lose some of that established neighborhood feel. It can even feel a bit cookie-cutter, with one of the streets having the same house side by side by side. That being said, the pro here is that these are all newer construction, so you get updated floor plans and energy-efficient homes all within the established Wyndham neighborhood. There are 91 homes within this section, with year built ranging from 2013 through right now in 2021, with some construction still ongoing. The sizes range from 3,000 square feet up to 5,500 square feet, with three to seven bedrooms and most having four and a half bathrooms. Prices depend on year built and size, with the low end at 600,000 all the way up to over a million dollars. As is tradition with new construction, the lot sizes are on the smaller side. If we had the opportunity to build here, we would, because you're in a great neighborhood and the schools are also top-notch, with Shady Grove Elementary, Short Pump Middle, and Deep Run High. So all the neighborhoods up next, we haven't covered at all before, so all of this will be new information. We're going to start with Hampshire, which is located south of Knuckles Road and west of Shady Grove Road. Hampshire actually has three sections and the most luxurious homes being located in the estates of Hampshire, but the homes in Hampshire and Hampshire South are still really nice too, so I've lumped them all together. Overall, there are 274 houses within this neighborhood, with year built ranging from 2002 to 2008, and a handful of outliers built in 2011 and 2013. This is a great area, and all of the yards are a decent size, and they're all nice and flat. All of the homes within the estates of Hampshire are pretty large, and the neighborhood average is around 4,000 square feet. One really nice thing about the estate section is that most of the homes here have brick veneers and hardy plank siding, and it doesn't get much better than that. Another plus that the entire neighborhood benefits from is that the school systems are phenomenal. 
Expect to pay somewhere between the 500s up to the mid 800s for a home here. And in return, you'll get a four to six bedroom with at least two and a half baths, but most of the homes here having three and a half bathrooms. There is an HOA, but it doesn't offer any real amenities. Lots of the residents end up joining the YMCA, which is super close by on Knuckles Road. And lastly, some of the homes here do feel a bit dated, but usually they have great bones and pretty nice floor plans, so it's definitely something you can work with and update to your taste. Located directly across the street from Hampshire is the Covington neighborhood. This is a smaller neighborhood with only 69 homes in it. These homes definitely fit the luxury category both in price and size, with a square footage range between 3,200 square feet up to 6,000 square feet, and these are large homes on proportionally small lots. Some of the houses at the northern end of the neighborhood do benefit from the heavily wooded land separating this neighborhood from Wyndham, or in other words, the privacy in that rear section won't change. The same can't be said for the undeveloped land north of the neighborhood. While it is very pretty right now, I can't help but worry that at some point a developer will buy that land and build some houses on it. The houses in Covington were built between 2005 and 2014, and they have four to six bedrooms with three and a half to five and a half bathrooms. Prices range from the 800s to the 900s. Similar to Hampshire, most of the homes in Covington have either a brick veneer with hardy plank siding or they're all brick. Yet again, there is a small HOA here that really doesn't do anything other than tell you what you can and can't do. That being said, it has accomplished its mission of maintaining the beauty and conformity of the neighborhood. And honestly, HOAs are pretty hard to avoid when shopping for luxury homes. The school systems here are Shady Grove Elementary, Short Pump Middle, and Deep Run High. Heading east, we arrive at our next neighborhood, which is Stable Hill. Stable Hill is located off of Holman Ridge Road between Twin Hickory Road and Linmore Drive. Stable Hill is a newer neighborhood with a year built ranging from 2013 and 2018. In fact, Sarah and I showed a few of the homes back in the day when the neighborhood was actually being built. There's a total of 101 homes in Stable Hill. Not surprisingly, given the name, you will notice that the land here isn't perfectly flat, so the builders took that as an opportunity to toss in basements in some of these houses, adding extra square feet to what are already pretty good sized homes. Sizes range from 2,900 square feet up to 5,900 square feet, with four to five bedrooms and two and a half bathrooms up to five and a half bathrooms. Prices range from the low 700s up to the high 800s. Overall, I would say the developer did a decent job with curb appeal, and I'd give it a B plus. I've been through prettier, but I've also seen way worse newer construction communities too that have no curb appeal. Now, this is up to you whether you view this as a pro or a con, but this neighborhood is situated right in between the elementary school and the middle school. So you will get the convenience if you drop your kids off at school, but it comes at the cost of having some extra traffic throughout the neighborhood. The school systems are Rivers Edge Elementary, Holman Middle, and Deep Run High. Before we get to the Mac Daddy, uber expensive neighborhood, we're gonna head south toward Short Pump and toward the Bentley neighborhood. This neighborhood of 54 homes is located to the west of Pouncey Track Road and north of Gayton Road. This location is killer as you are knocking on Short Pump's door, but a location related con is that taking a left into the neighborhood during rush hour will probably be troublesome, and I'd recommend taking the back entrance from North Gaten onto Porsche Drive. And yes, one of the street's names is Porsche Drive, and I'm even saying it the fancy way, because with these home prices, you kinda have to. Homes here cost between the mid 700s to the mid 900s. Sizes range from 2,700 square feet up to 7,000 square feet, and have four to six bedrooms with most homes having three and a half bathrooms or more. Many of these homes have either a finished third floor or a basement. The year built ranges from 2007 to 2009. I do really like this neighborhood, but if I could choose, I would skip the houses that border Pouncey Track Road, as you'll definitely notice some road noise from there. The school systems are split between Short Pump and Glen Allen schools, with Coachelli Elementary, Short Pump Middle, and Deep Run High, which is a great combination of schools. This last neighborhood is a budget breaker, and if you have to ask, you can't afford it, but I will tell you anyway. All the homes here cost over a million dollars, and there was a recent sale that was actually over two and a quarter million dollars. This baller neighborhood is Henley, and it's located east of Pouncey Tract, north of Stonehurst Estates, and south of Quarry Hill Road. More on that last road name in a minute. Might as well call them what they are, and there are a total of 80 mansions located within Henley. The smallest one is 4,000 square feet in size, and the average for the neighborhood is over 6,300 square feet. These are all custom-built homes from 2006 through right now. It's not just the houses that are large either. Every lot here is an acre or more. An added bonus is that you're still on city water and sewer despite that large lot size. There's a neighborhood just south of this one where you also get an acre, but you're on an alternative septic system. So believe me, being on county sewer is much better than that. So let's talk about the location. 
Right above the neighborhood is the elementary school. But there's something else just above the neighborhood that you should be aware of. Just like the name of the street would imply, there's a rock quarry very close by. You can hear the noise from the quarry in the back parts of the neighborhood, but I doubt you'd actually be able to hear it inside your home. It might not bother some, but if I'm going to spend a million plus dollars, I would prefer not to be neighboring a rock quarry. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, let us know by hitting that like button or leaving a comment. We have many more great videos coming up, including more luxury neighborhoods in other areas of Richmond, so you'll definitely want to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of that. If you're thinking about moving to Richmond, be sure to hit us up. We can make your move stress-free and easy. And I also want to say a huge thank you to everyone who has reached out to Sarah and I already. We appreciate your support of our business and this channel. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I'll see you next time.